This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to today's MCTV Weekday Update from our new Kathy and David Swafford TV studio in the College of Media and Communication. Hello, I'm Amy Brewer. And I'm Caitlin Sinamo. This week, free silicone bracelets were offered on campus by the Tech Activities Board. Students could get anything imprinted on them, but for one student, a tech bracelet was not an option. Georgia Bulldogs. The Tech Activities Board encouraged students to express their individuality by participating in their Make Your Own Silicone Bracelet event on Wednesday. The TAB event was free with the Tech ID and is one of the many free events TAB holds throughout the semester. Tech students can get just about anything on their bracelets, whether it's their name, favorite sports team, or favorite saying on 18 different colors. I, of course, chose my name on pink. Students enjoyed how quickly their bracelets were made and were able to get more than one according to TAB member Sarah Garrett. Depending on how long the line is, um, we'll let people get, you know, one to two more if there's not a long line. Shockey New is a Georgia Bulldogs fan and says that his bracelet represents his hometown team. Well, I mean, I like tech, but I got a uh, Georgia Bulldogs, so. Uh, I mean, like, I used to live in Georgia and, you know, football out there is pretty much religion. However, Rolando Castanon is a Red Raider fan and wasn't too happy with his friend's bracelet decision. I'm real disappointed in him. I'm not a Georgia fan, but, you know, I like the guy, even though I beat him in ping pong. I'm Quirley Peel with MCTV News. And we did it again. Texas Tech sets another spring enrollment record. This is the fourth semester in a row with enrollment over 30,000. Tech officials say the university is on track for its long-term goal to reach 40,000 students by 2020. Lubbock community, you still have time to check out the Texas Tech School of Arts 20th Annual Clay on the Walls exhibit. Here's what's inside. Landmark Arts and the Texas Tech School of Art opened the 20th anniversary Clay on the Wall Invitational last month. Curators selected 20 North American artists' interpretations of clay to display in the landmark gallery of the art building. Anthony Saya is the assistant director of Landmark Arts and says the exhibit brings a unique perspective to the Lubbock community. The show itself is an investigation in the concept of clay and how it can be conceived and uh, shown in an artwork or a gallery space um, where we see a lot of artwork that's on pedestals and things like that. Well, this is kind of taking that away and putting it on the walls. It allows students and as well as uh, staff and faculty, as well as the community, to be exposed to a lot of different artwork that they might not have been exposed to, um, you know, somewhere else. It took over 60 hours to install the entire exhibit. This piece alone took over two days to literally map out the state of Texas and individually place each flower to represent different population areas across the state. You can check out the hard work that the laborers and artists put into the exhibit until it ends on February 24th. A shooting last month on the Houston area campus has some state lawmakers talking about how to handle guns on campus in Texas. Reporter Sydney Holmes shows us both sides of this tense debate. There's actually guns on campus every day. That's Corporal John Radel, a five-year member of the Texas Tech Police Department. Radel is one of the tech policemen who does active shooter training. With all the recent public shootings, Radel said preparation for students is key to safety. You can just take simple steps of being aware of your surroundings is the biggest key role there. You know, just because you're in a relaxed area, you know, it, it's hard to say. That I guess you kind of have to be a little bit paranoid these days and look around. You know, you can't just be oblivious of where you're at. Nicholas Wolf, the team coordinator for the Tech Gun Club, is a concealed handgun license holder. He said there have been plenty of shootings stopped by people with their concealed handgun licenses. And you can walk around all day on campus if you want with a, you know, your concealed handgun, but you cannot at any time, you cannot enter a building or go under an awning. But it may not be that way for long. Currently, there is a bill proposed by Senator Birdwell to change the law to allow people to carry handguns into buildings, which Wolp said could be a really great thing. You know, Tech PD has a good response time, but I mean, no matter how fast you are, there's no way you can be there immediately. Radel gave some specific examples of how the Texas Tech Police Department is planning on staying prepared. 
we'll get together and do active shooter training, uh, clearing buildings, running scenarios as far as uh, shoot, don't shoot scenarios. Because uh, sometimes it, it can just be something where you can talk somebody down, and that's obviously a better outcome than anything. But, you know, we are training for the worst, and we're definitely hoping for the best. Radel said he would like to continue CHL training for those on campus who carry. We get certified on our guns and our firearms and our rifles and shotguns, but we have to recertify every year, and we train throughout that year. And, you know, just because you've been certified one time doesn't, shouldn't mean your, your training should stop. In order to do active shooter training with the LPD, you have to be a company or a corporation. But Wolf said the Texas Tech Gun Club is planning to host an active shooter training class for those students who are interested later in the semester. For MCTV Weekday Update, I'm Sydney Holmes. There's a new horse in town after the longest serving horse in Tech history retired. Andrew Doak introduces us to the Masked Rider's new ride. After an 11 year era, the reign of Midnight Matador came to an end and the transition to search for a new horse began. Stephanie Rode, Spirit Program Director for Texas Tech, who played a major role in finding the horse, said not any horse would do. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people said, you know, just get a horse who can run in the stadium. You know, well, well along with that, you have to get a horse who has a good disposition to be in a stadium because it's really an unnatural place for a horse to be. After a long search, the Mast Rider program felt they had found a horse that not only met their criteria in terms of physical characteristics, but personality as well. The new guy here is quite curious about everything, which is fun. Um, he definitely looks at everything, but he doesn't get scared, which is you know what, what we were looking for in the new horse. Woody made his first trial run at the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas and kept his cool around all the distractions a bowl game atmosphere can produce. Uh, but this one, Woody, our new horse, was at the bowl game. He did a great job and nothing bothered him. We had, uh, there were fireworks on the ground, the guns, the bell, the crowd, the band, cheerleaders, flags. He was great and he was, it was just really sweet and so we all decided that's the way we need to go. However, at times he might have been too calm. Uh, this guy did not know the fight song, so he just sat there. And it was time to run, and you know, you're trying to wake him up. He kind of fell asleep while the bands were playing, and um, trying to get him back. Okay, we're supposed to be hauling down the field now, and you're asleep. Wenzel said that even though she only had the privilege to ride Woody in one football game, she has many more events to attend along with him until a new masked rider is appointed in April. For MCTV, I'm Andrew Doak. I know this will come to, as a shock to you, but it was pretty windy outside today. A mild cold front blew through last night. Yesterday, the high was in the 70s, today in the 50s. The wind stuck around blowing up dust and making it hard for construction workers to keep their hard hats on. Look for another stronger cold front coming this weekend, so we'll be back below freezing by Sunday morning. A big night in sports last night. Sports director Josh Cook joins us now with the highlights and more. Josh? Welcome into sports, everyone. The Lady Raiders broke out a different kind of uniform on Wednesday night inside the USA. Texas Tech sporting the pink for the Play for K game. Tech 2-0 win wearing the pink unis. Pick it up first half. Lady Raiders up by 10, 24-14. Minute and a half to go. Casey Morris with the steal. Lady Raiders on the fast break. Morris to Brown. Brown to Smalls for the basket. 26-14 lead. Lady Raiders take a 27-19 lead at the half. Second half, 13-25 left in the game. West Virginia trying to come back. Crystal Caldwell with a 3, 40-33 lead for Tech. Moments later, Kelsey Baker with the layup. Tech up 42-33. Down the stretch, though, it was the free throws that sealed the deal. Tech finishing the night 36 for 42 from the charity stripe en route to a 76 to 63 victory. I mean, we've been working on it. It just shows how dedicated we are to getting better every day. And we've been going to practice each day and working on our free throws day in, day out. And it's shown on the court. And eventually we knew it would pay off. So we just stay focused on free throws. Lady Raiders are back on the hardwood on Saturday, traveling to Fort Worth to face TCU. First tip is set for 7 p.m. After yet another successful weekend on the track, the Red Raiders and Lady Raiders are getting geared up for the Tyson Invitational. Tech heads for Fayetteville, Arkansas today to get ready for the two-day event, and the team is ready for the step up in competition. Well, this meet at Arkansas, we've had on the, 
on the date for a while, and uh, it's going to be, uh, we call it the mini national championship. There's a lot of teams uh, that will be there. In fact, most teams will be there that will be competing for the national championship. So it's a, it's a big meet. It's, it's going to be good. I'm mostly excited about getting on that track. I haven't run there since I was a sophomore, so it'll be good just to, you know, kind of get that under our feet and then see some people who are going to be there, you know, get used to it. And um, it should be another good race, hopefully another school record. Staying on the track, he's been breaking record after record this season for Texas Tech. And this, and now, he has earned some recognition. Long distance runner Kennedy Kithika was named the Big 12 Male Runner of the Week by the Big 12 Conference on Wednesday. The most recent record Kithika broke was running the fastest mile in school history, registering a 3 minute and 59.53 second mile. Kithika is one fast guy, that is for sure. Well, that does it for sports. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Josh. That's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.